came all the way to Dendermonde only to barely get a lap in before I was asked to exit the course due to insurance reasons. They don't want anyone pre-riding. Okay, fair enough. But I did manage to get a lap in. It's super broken up by hopping over fences. Should have been a clue. They didn't want us there, but I figured it was an, a necessary construction measure because it is Friday before a Sunday race. Uh, I did not, there's a massive flyover. I did not ride the flyover because it had a gate and I figured that probably means I shouldn't be on it. There's nothing worse than being on the top of a flyover and have no way to get back down or it falls down. So here's the lap, super broken up. Uh, it's mostly super wet grass that's probably just gonna get chewed up in the race. So this lap, hardly good for layout, hardly good for ground, hardly exciting, was not worth the hour drive, not worth being a World Cup. It'd only be interesting if it was a sheet of ice, I think. We'll see how it goes. Welcome to Dum Dermond. Ah. <laughs> we are on the start-finish straight right now. I'm not oh. quite sure where the actual start or finish will be, like as they don't have the arch up. It's just sort of a road, and there would have been a right-hand turn there, but I had to hop over a fence. And I'm not sure what the surface is going to be like come race time for that turn. I don't know if it's going to be mud or if they're still going to have the um, metal plates there. I don't, maybe that's not even the turn, <laughs> who knows? Uh, anyways, you can notice how wide this course is, which I really love because it makes it really nice for passing and really great for navigating. And it's got these really great swooping turns, which, you know, the turns are definitely still a factor, but for somebody like me who isn't quite great at the super sharp turns with a lot of ruts, uh, when they're really fast, I like the swoop but I also don't think that this is gonna be a very fast race, as you can tell by the pace that I'm going right here. It's been really rainy in Belgium the past couple of days, and when I say rainy in Belgium, uh, I mean there's actually been a lot of sun, but when it's rained, it's really poured, and the ground here is just saturated. They didn't want me riding on the course, uh, so I got kicked off after a lap, and there was really nobody on the course. It looks like I'm maybe the fifth bike to have been around and I don't know if the people on the course are just uh, kind of pirating or if it's people just making sure the flow is good I have no idea but really saturated ground and I'm interested to see how quickly it gets chewed up so this is like a platform that they built over what looks like I don't know a small gutter ravine of some sort into a climb here I think if I'd been prepared for this climb it would have been rideable despite it being slippery but I think with a few people riding it, and even if a few people run it, it'll quickly become one of those situations where you're not able to, to ride it unless you have a lot of speed. Maybe the men will and the, men, and the women will have to run it. So a little off camber downhill there onto this really well-constructed platform over that little ditch that uh, I had referenced earlier. And now we're going by pit one. I'm assuming it's pit one. Uh, the transition there looked a little rough, and it's not rough because it's uneven, uh, or even if it's hard ground to hard ground. The transitions are actually rough because you're going so quickly down the hills, and then when it transitions, uh, your wheels are just sinking. So my body wanted to keep going because that's how momentum works, but my wheels were getting stopped because that's how Belgian mud works. So. I think it's going to be an interesting race contending with surface changes just in terms of actually momentum interacting with surface that is the sloggy surface and right now you see it's a it's a slog fest and it's really wet and it's supposed to rain all day on sunday it's supposed to so today's friday it's supposed to rain a little bit on saturday it's supposed to rain all day on sunday but we might not have any pre-riders on Saturday, so we'll see if this, you know, kind of holds up. But that little climb, completely innocuous, no problem with the climb. The drop had a little bit of a camber, but nothing bad. The transition it was a little bit rough because again, as soon as my front wheel hit the flat section, the front wheel wanted to stop because the ground was so soft. And now 
I'm assuming that gate won't be there for the race, but who knows, it could be a new addition of a hurdle. Making a right-hand turn onto this sort of double track access road, uh, riding in a uh, tractor rut right now. The road itself seems like it does have some pinch flat potential. There's, you know, a few small rocks because it is just an access road. It's not groomed or anything, but it's maybe the only part on the course that I would be concerned with uh, any sort of potential for flatting. And we will cross a little road and then hop back onto more grass. And uh, here you can see the giant flyover. So again, we're just, I mean, it's going for, through more grassy turns. This is just a freaking course of grassy turns. I don't know why they just didn't call it Grassy Turndermonda. I mean, Dendermonda is the name of the town, but you know, they could have given this race a more exciting name. So you can see the way that my bars are moving. That's just because like that was a really sloggy spot and just really need to work to get the pedals over and just pull the tires out of the mud. Now it seems like I'm able to accelerate a little bit because it is so wet that it's almost easy to pedal through. It's when it starts to get churned up and the water makes mud that it gets really hard. Um, so this grass right here is really thick as opposed to the grass on the other side of the road that we crossed where it looks like it was just so freshly seeded that the grass is about one blade per square inch. Uh, this grass seems to be, I don't know, doing much better. Maybe it's older. Little off camber descent, but tons of run out. Nice wide uh, fencing here. They're not anticipating anybody running into a fence because there's no nice little bumper. A few more wiggles here. And I mean, just slogging through a puddle. This is not very interesting to narrate. But I don't know, you guys wanted me to narrate this crap, so here I am. And obviously that's the flyover. It has a ramp up, and then I think it flattens out, and then there are stairs. And then you have the whole entire run, uh, you know, like to traverse the flyover. And then there's a long ramp down, but there's a gate in front of the flyover. And yeah, it. I didn't want to risk riding a flyover that had a gate on it in the event that, I don't know, maybe it wasn't done yet. <laughs> uh, so now... After the flyover, you'll be making a left-hand turn and back into this section that, again, is just twisty grass. And I thought about um, doing a bit of a time warp on this video and making it go by faster, but for anybody that wants to use this video for a little bit of context in what the ground surface is like, what the course layout is like, what the actual length of any section is like, this is obviously a much more accurate representation, even though it is at <laughs> literally walking pace right now. Uh, so this little hump uh, and the other, the hump on the other side of the pits, on the other side of the road, the only elevation in the course will plus the giant flyover. But I didn't get to use the flyover, so I don't know really what that counts as for elevation. Uh, I'm excited to see if those, uh, if those hills are going to be runs or rides in the race when it is super muddy. It's always something, you know, you can try and try and try as hard as you can to ride something in pre-ride, finally nail it, only to find out that it's going to be a guaranteed run in the race no matter what. It's one of those things that you have to balance your time on in pre-ride, and sometimes even in a pre-ride when you encounter something that is really frustrating, you might commit to running it in the race but you want to keep trying it just to sharpen your skills anyways. I don't know if that's what like somebody at the very top would do, but it's definitely something that I do. And then if I'm in a race where things are not going my way, sometimes I just say, I'm not racing anymore. I'm just trying to ride this course really well. And I might slow down and try to stay smooth so I can you know, complete the feature smoothly, even if it's not necessarily the fastest thing to do. Look, now I'm just talking about race theory because I'm just pedaling around in a grassy field. It's like it's the name of the sport or something. And there's not even, I, I mean, obviously this is like chewed up mud, as I was about to say. There's not even different surfaces here. Uh, it's just been wet, sloggy mud. So there, uh, again, there was like a gate because I'm crossing that road and we're going by the pits. This is going to be pit two and more grass yep it's more grass it's more grass it's just wet grass guys there's some like 
wet dirt and then there's wet grass and then there's that double track mud there's whatever surface you would call a flyover uh, and then there's the pavement of the start finish straight that's it that's all there is <laughs> We're still there. Oh no, there's a, there's a two little bridges, but I mean, that's the same surface as a flyover, so whatever. So here's some little chicanes. I'm not sure what their purpose are, but I do think that if there are barriers, they're going to be here. But I know sometimes really muddy races, they don't always put barriers in because you're being forced to run enough that they're like, mm, why should we make these people pick things up? So after that gate that I had to go up and over, it's going to be a right-hand turn onto this uh, little bit of a paved section. And then I'm fairly sure that we're going to take this paved section all the way up to the road that is going to be the start-finish straight. And sometimes the start and finish are in two different locations. So it might be the case that the finish is here and the start is on the street proper or vice versa or they'll all be um, somewhere here on okay. this main street. Again, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Sorry this is so chopped up and it's not very interesting, but I drove an hour on Christmas Day to see a World Cup, so I want the world to have my same experience and hopefully not make the same mistake I did, which is go to a place that you can't even ride, and even if you do, it's not even worth it. Merry Christmas.